Yum yum. Hi, it's Alex. Let's tackle all the basics we need going forward. Compositing is at its core just a bunch of simple maths. Most nodes can be approximated by two simple nodes, the expression and the merge expression. With these two nodes and a bunch of rather simple formulas, you can build a complete composite, including transforms, blurs and lots of other things. Now, of course you wouldn't want to do that in a production workflow, as you might literally spend all day typing in math formulas. But to dissect what happens when you blur something or adjust the gamma, it's a very helpful tool. I'm also going to use the matrix and the color matrix node. Theoretically, you could get by with just the expression and the merge expression. But using the matrix and the color matrix makes a lot of things much simpler to type and hopefully also easier to understand. Typing in a bunch of expressions gets tiresome to watch quickly, which is why I'm going to visualize the effects using a custom built slice tool. If you look at that, the output of the slice tool, it looks at an input image, which is black at the moment because there's nothing connected. You can tell it which line to look at from the input image. And it will plot the red, green, blue and luminance values on a graph from 0 to 1. So if we have a look over here. Uh, by the way, you'll get all the Nuke scripts I'm using for this, so you can have a look and play around yourself. So if we have the slice tool, look at a constant set to 18% gray, you get the corresponding plotted value. If we decrease or increase the brightness, you can see the plotted line go up or down. If we look at a ramp, you can see it go from 0 all the way to the left to 1 all the way on the right. And if we change the ramp type, you can see how the plotting changes accordingly. And if we look at a color wheel, you can see how the how the red, green and blue values get plotted according to what's shown in the image. This allows us to directly inspect what, what a math or compositing operation actually does under the hood. Next up, the expression nodes. The two expression nodes work exactly the same. You type in an expression that runs on every pixel of the image and returns a result. The only difference is that the merge expression has two inputs and thus allows maths on two sets of pixels to create a result. Now let's look at the expression node, the simple of the two. Again, we have a ramp. We have the expression node, which allows you to input expressions for four channels. Uh, here, I'm just influencing the red channel by taking whatever is already in the red value for that pixel, plus adding a value of 0.25 to the image. So if you look at that, we get a noticeable red tint. If we look at the slice, we get again the linear plot. And if we enable the expression again, you can see the red value gets shifted up by a quarter. Over here we have an example with red being multiplied by 0.5, which basically lowers the red value by half, which gives this cyan shift. If you look at that, you can see that uh, reflected in the plotting. Well, we get at one, we get 0 0.5, and uh, it's just a straight linear multiplication. What can you put in here? Basically, there's a manual page which lists all or most of the functions that are available to you in the expression node. So if we, I don't know, pick a sinus of x or pick a 
let's pick the power, which basically is a gamma. So if we do the power function on the red channel with a power of 2, we should get a gamma curve. And that's exactly what we get. So if you want to gamma down, that's that. If you want to gamma up, you'd use the inverse. And you can just go crazy in the expression node, really, and we'll dissect that in the future. Next up, the merge expression, which does exactly the same thing. So you have pretty much the same properties. The only difference is you can refer to the A and the B input. So here I'm using the red of the A input in this node. So in comes B, which is the default stream. So if I disable the node and look at it, I still get the same gray color. And if I enable it, I now get the red channel from the color wheel instead, because I'm placing the, the A streams red channel in there. Over here, I'm adding red from input A and red from input B. So we get gray plus the color wheel equals that. And again, uh, you can go crazy with formulas. So we could apply a gamma to the red, for example. Over here, we have the matrix node, which is a tad more complicated. If you create a matrix for the first time, it asks you the width and height of the matrix, which basically gives you something that looks like this, if you choose a 3x3 three three matrix. The matrix node is special. It is the only node that can have a varying amount of value fields, and it asks you uh, when it creates, when it, when you create it, how many property fields you want to have. Basically, what kind of matrix you want to work with. You cannot change the matrix after the fact. So a three by three matrix, once it's created, will always be a three by three matrix for Nuke. If you need more fields, you need to create a new matrix and fill in your values again. The matrix works by going over the image pixel by pixel and adding up all the fields. So the center field is always the current pixel. So if we take a look at this checkerboard in really, really, really close up, we have the pixel here or here, doesn't matter. And if we create a matrix that has a one in the middle and zeros all around it, you'll get the exact same image back out. If we have a matrix where the center is zero and the right value is one, we'll get basically, if you, if you look at the original, uh, This pixel here looks at a pixel one to its right, so over here, and takes that color for this pixel. So what we get is a one pixel transform. That's, that's your very basic transform, basically. Uh, if we create a matrix with ha which has 10 values in X, you can create a five pixel transform. You can also use just the expression node to emulate a matrix, but it gets uh, very tedious to type very, very quickly. The matrix node takes the center pixel as the current pixel, looks at the surrounding pixels. So that's one pixel to the left, one pixel to the right, one pixel up, one pixel down, and takes the pixel information from that pixel, multiplied by whatever values in here. So 
if we want the top pixel to influence the current pixel by like half, we would put 0.5 in here. If we want to influence it uh, twice as much, we put two in here. And then all these values get added together. And that's the output of the matrix. Anything above one and below zero gets clipped. Um, you can also normalize it, which will basically add all the values together, divide them by nine, or however many fields the matrix has. That's basically it. So in, in the expression node, to get the exact same result as the matrix node as, for example, a three by three matrix, you'd have to input a pretty boring long formula that kind of looks like this. So that would be the formula for a matrix that looks like this. Now, if we look at the result from that, we get quite a blown out, blown out image. And if we look at the expression, now obviously that's just for the red channel. So in here we could say just influence the red channel in the matrix as well. That gives us that. And if we compare the two, oh, Maybe we should get rid of the expressions in the green and blue. So now if we compare the two, you get the exact same image. But obviously that's quite a lot more to type than a simple matrix and much harder to read. But it's possible. And if you want to have different formulas for red, green, and blue, that might be the way to go. Or you could just put three matrix nodes uh, below each other and just take the red, green, and blue boxes to influence only one of the channels. Now, to show what the normalize does is, let me quickly tick all three channels again. Uh, you can see if we look at, oops, if we look at the pixel value for the white, we get values that are way blown out with uh, 4.5. The normalize puts the output back into range between 0 and 1, which in this case means if we look at the original and the output of the matrix, you essentially get a blur, a one pixel blur. Next up, the color matrix. Color matrix looks very similar to the matrix node. It's a fixed three by three matrix, so you cannot change the matrix size for the color matrix, which kind of makes sense since it's only influencing R, G, and B. We don't really need more than a three by three matrix. The <coughs> color matrix, if we quickly look at the help page, what it does is the rows are the output for red, green, and blue. <clears throat> and the columns look at the current pixels, red, green, and blue values. So if you look just at the first row, which outputs red, first looks at the current pixels red value, multiplies it by that number, then it looks at the current pixel's green value, multiplies it by that number, and then it looks at the current pixel's blue value, multiplies it by that number, adds all three numbers together, and that's your new red value. So what does that mean? If we have a color matrix, that's one, zero, zero, in the upper row, it looks at the current red value, multiplies it by one, and green and blue get multiplied by zero, and that's your new red, meaning red comes in, red goes out. Same with green and same with blue. So this color matrix doesn't change the image at all. If we now put 0.5 and 
in the first row, which is the output for the red. We now add half of whatever is in green at that pixel and a quarter of whatever is in blue in that pixel to the image, resulting in something that brightens the red. The color matrix node can be used for all kinds of interesting tricks, especially with 3D outputs like point world and normal passes. But at its most basic, it's used for color transforms. So if we add a color space node and look at that, and set it, for example, to LAB conversion, uh, you can see the color matrix node or the color matrix properties that are used for that. So if we copy those values into a color matrix node, we get the exact same conversion from linear to LAB. Or if we swap the inputs, you get the values to convert back from linear uh, from LAB to linear. That doesn't work with every conversion in here. It's only for the ones that actually have a color shift somehow. sRGB and, and Rec Center 9, for example, are simple gamma curves, so they don't uh, have a color matrix applied at all. In the same way, the matrix node can be, can be achieved or emulated with the ex expression node. You can also create a color matrix node with an expression node. So, for example, the color matrix where we multiplied green and blue in certain proportions to the red channel would look like this. We have a red channel plus a half of the green channel plus a quarter of the blue channel gives us exactly the same result as the corresponding color matrix node. But again, the color matrix node is easier to type and applies to all three channels at once. And here we'd have to copy and paste the formula. And then adjust accordingly. It's just a whole lot of copy and pasting, typing, that's completely unnecessary if we use the specific nodes. And there you have it. With these four nodes, the expression, the merge expression, the matrix, and the color matrix node, you have the basic building blocks for all the more complicated and complex nodes inside a compositing application. Thanks for watching. Yum, yum!